On the last video, we talked about how there are different kinds of volcanic mountains and how these things happen because of the different conditions upon which these mountains form. Similarly, there's also different kinds of lava. And we refer to this as we talked about earlier in the video that lava will go through different structures as it rises to the surface and will pick up different elements and change its composition. The lava that forms near the continents is not going to be the same lava that forms in the oceans. And sometimes the composition of the mantle from which the lava comes from is also be, be different. Now, there are two major categories for lava. And this is not really one of those things where you like one or the other. It's more like a spectrum. And depending on the volcano, depending on actually the actual eruption, sometimes the volcanoes will shift from one to the other. But depending on the actual volcano and the eruption, you're going to be a little more mafic or a little more felsic. And you're going to be somewhere on the spectrum between one side or the other. So things on the left side of this picture are going to be representing the felsic lava and the felsic eruptions. And things on the right side will represent the mafic eruptions from mafic volcanoes. Now let's explain the difference between those two. It all has to do with where, where this forms and the kinds of material which are in it. And it refers to what I just mentioned in the beginning of the video. Basically, I look at this word here that says mafic. And I see the M, the big M at the beginning of the world, and I think M for magnesium. And mafic lava is going to be more common along oceanic volcanoes, such as oceanic hotspots, seamounts, because of ocean versus ocean collisions, and divergent boundaries. And so, since this lava is going to be coming through a different kind of asthenosphere and rock that's a denser and rich of magnesium, just like the mantle, the lava is going to be different from the lava that's coming on the continents. Felsic lava, I see this SI right here in the middle of the world, word and I remember silicon. Felsic lava is going to be rich in silicon oxide, which is the which are most common in the Earth's crust, and the Earth's crust is mostly continental crust. Remember that. Continental crust includes, includes the majority of the mass of the Earth's crust because it's so much more massive, so much thicker. And it it's rich in silicon and oxygen. And so felsic lava is richer in silicon and oxygen because it's coming mostly from continents. So on this side, you're going to talk about continents. And on this side, you're talking about oceans. So on the left side, you have uh, continent versus ocean volcanoes. You have volcanic hotspots associated with continents. You have large igneous provinces which are continental crust. Then you also have the right side, oceanic volcanoes, like I mentioned before. Now, the biggest difference between this, then, is going to be the composition. Now, silicon and oxygen are kind of sticky. And those eruptions, when, when you have a lot of, lot of silicon content, will tend to be colder. So you see that? Because it's easier to make that rock melt. So silicon does not have a lot of, of thing. Besides, the content of the crust is so thick that by the time the lava gets up there, it's cooled down a lot. So typically, felsic eruptions, which because they're continental eruptions, by definition, the lava had to go through a very thick crust and it will cool down a lot. So those eruptions will tend to be colder. By the way, I looked at that in the first line. They're talking about the different kinds of igneous rock which is made from these kinds of eruptions. And we'll refer to this back, back to this later. But just notice how the felsic eruptions are going to make more materials more like granite and rhyolith, while the oceanic eruptions will make more like basalt uh, rock. All right, so sometimes we refer to mafic eruptions as basaltic eruptions and felsic eruptions as rhyolith or granite eruptions, okay? Now, the, uh, in addition to the, to the temperature, because this is colder, it is going to crystallize more on the felsic eruptions. And remember, it's also stickier. And that means it's going to be more viscous than the mafic eruptions. Mafic eruptions are more fluid-like. The, the lava becomes a little hotter. And it's also going to become a little more liquid-like. And notice that they're in between them, by the way, you're going to have some intermediate lava, right? So we'll talk about that as well. Now, on the next slide, we're talking about the gas content. On the gas content, you notice that the felsic side will have more gas than the side. And that has something to do, again, with the composition. It has something to do with what they go through. And typically... It will gather more gases in the con continents than it will on the oceans. And that, that means the eruptions will tend to be more explosive. Also because it's stickier, so it will clog the volcano and it will hold that pressure for a while before it can finally not take it anymore and explode. Meanwhile, the other side is going to be less explosive and more runny. The explosions are, the, the volcanoes are more like spilling volcanoes than than bang volcanoes.
And that also alters the kind of um, structures that the volcanoes are made of and the kind of eruptions that the volcanoes are made of. The majority of the material that comes out of felsic explosions is going to be pyroclastic deposits. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. But the majority of the material that makes up the mafic eruptions are more liquid lava flow eruptions. And so felsic eruptions will have pyroclastic materials, lava domes, and big explosions. Just a little bit of actual lava. On the mafic side, you're going to have runny actual lava that's not very uh, cold, all right? Now, that this, all of this is also going to affect the kinds of volcanic structures that form. Uh, lava flows will tend to form shield volcanoes, and, and a little colder than that, you're going to get into cinder cones. It's halfway in between, you get something like composite volcanoes, which sometimes act mafic, sometimes act felsic, sometimes act in between. And then, if you scroll in that, you're going to get dome complexes. I mean, those are the ones that typically tend to be the most explosive when they finally go. What we can learn about this is that there's lava of different types. And remember, that has to do with where they come from, ocean versus continent, the crystallization at higher temperatures for mafic than for felsic. Eruptions are going to be hotter in mafic than felsic. More fluid, more lava flows. It's thin, fluid, spreads over a long area. Felsic eruptions are more explosive and thick materials which are more viscous and richer in silicon rather than magnesium like the mafic lava is. But in addition to these major components, lava can also change depending on what it goes through and what it was in it in the first place. And that explains why you have so many different kinds of materials and so many different kinds of lava. Remember we talked about this in the first few videos of our lecture series. And some of the other elements which sometimes show up in lava are going to be aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, and things like that. And that's why uh, volcanic rocks are a source of minerals, which will be otherwise trapped in the, inside, in the lower layers of the earth. Now, depending on what minerals you have, remember we talked about this, the lava is going to melt at different points because of the mixture thing. Remember, a mixture will also affect the melting point of the lava, and it will also, different parts of it will melt at different points, like we talked about with the idea of partial melting or fractional crystallization, which is the opposite. So the rock will also solidify at different points, which will make rocks in layers, like we talked about before. And this all has to do with the, what the discovery is made by Bowen, which is one of those guys that made the experiment on the, on the laboratory, exploring several different types of rock. Also remember that the water content will change the type of lava. That's why uh, volcanic eruptions that happen in the continents tend to be more explosive because they have a lot of water in it because the, this is the subducting oceanic zone will add water to the lava and to the rock that's actually melting and it will create a lot of water vapor which will tend to make these, the, erosions, uh, the eruptions a little more explosive. And remember, because of the water, it will actually affect how the boiling point, it will make it colder lava, right? Because it doesn't need to be as hot to actually melt. And so that means that the lava will start off being colder than the, the oceanic lava will actually be. And actually then it will cool down the rises and goes through all that thick crust. And that's why, another reason why felsic eruptions tend to be a little colder than mafic eruptions tend to be. Another important thing to do, talk about explosions and lava and kinds of eruptions is the content of gases. You know, just like a champagne bottle, when you shake it, you make all that gas trapped inside of it, and you finally let go, you make a big explosion. The more gases which are trapped inside an, an explosion, the, the more gases which are inside a volcano, the more explosive the eruptions will actually be. By the way, gases from volcanic eruptions, including water vapor, are the source or contributed to the source of the oceans that we have today, early in the Earth formation. It was also the volcanoes which generated the early Earth atmosphere when the process that we called algassing. And volcanoes are still tied to very important gas cycles, such as the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and, other, and the water cycle. And so gases, contents from volcanoes are definitely very important. The most common gases are going to be water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur-like gases as well. So a volcano that has a lot of gas trapped underneath will eventually blow up with a massive release of gases and tend to be more explosive than volcanoes that do not have it. And this will be the case anytime you have water involved. So ocean versus ocean or ocean versus continent, convergent boundary volcanoes are going to be the ones which tend to be the most explosive. So island arc volcanoes and 
mountain range volcanoes are the ones that are typically going to be the more explosive than the divergent boundary or the oceanic hotspot volcanoes which are not actually going through those water crust which has water in it all right now i know it's kind of confusing because you think of an oceanic hot spot that's in the middle of the water remember that water is above the crust we're talking about water below the crust that gets added while the magma is actually forming okay also remember that if there's a lot of gas in the rocks that are forming during the explosions of these volcanoes you make the rock a little more porous or full of little holes to actually trap and store those gases and then that's why you're going to make things like pumice rock and peripheric rock and things like that and we'll talk about that when we do igneous rock in a little more detail and we'll bring this idea of of vesicle rocks back but for now you can see here an example of a rock like that full of tiny little vesicles or holes which were storing the gas which was formed inside the lava so when this rock cooled quickly it left behind the pockets of gas that were inside it all right so a gas amounts that will not only affect how explosive the eruptions happen but also affect the kinds of rocks that will form during the eruptions all right now Remember that the composition of the lava will also tell us a lot about what's inside the earth because this lava is coming from the earth and it will tell us also about what kinds of things lava actually went through. If this lava formed above uh, oceanic crust, for example, it will be more magnesium rich like we talked about, but if it formed over a continental crust, it will be more silicon rich, right? So. Before I move on, I also wanted to point out that it is possible to get mafic explosions in continents as well. You have to remember that if you would look at the mantle and the kinds of magma that's in the mantle itself, it's going to be magnesium-rich mafic lava. But this mafic lava typically has to go through the rock and rise and melt the rock as it goes along. And as it does that, it kind of picks up materials from the lower crust and becomes felsic. So it's felsic because it gathers silicon and oxygen from the crust that goes going through. And as it rises, it cools down, it crystallizes, it becomes more viscous and colder. And then you get the explosive volcanoes such as the composite volcanoes you see on the left side. However, if this lava went through a fissure or a volcanic crack, and it didn't really have to actually melt the surrounding rock. And so these deep fractures uh, permit the mafic lava to go through the surface without actually going through the crust and melting it. And so you're going to have a more mafic eruption or shield volcano even on the continent. So it is possible to have what we call volcanic hotspots forming through fissures instead of the actual normal process of melting the crust and rising as we go along which typically happen because of the wetting of the bottom of the continental crust like we saw in the other pictures remember that we can learn a lot about what's inside of the earth from the lava that we get from the inside of the earth a lot of the things we know about the layers of the earth we know because we did scientific studies and we actually study the speed of the of the waves as they go through the layers like we talked about in the earthquake video but another way of learning about what's inside of the earth is, is studying the magma that's coming from those layers. And because elements solidify at different points and you have things like uh, fractional crystallization, partial melting and all that stuff, magma that is fast rising will keep a lot of the elements that came from it and not really mix with the elements that are around the rock that it rose through. And that will give you a picture of what's the mental like on the layers from which this magma is coming from. So magma and volcanism is yet another way that we can actually learn about the composition of the Earth's interior. Over the next two videos, we're going to be talking about the types of explosions that are associated with these things. We talked about lava flows versus pyroclastic explosions, and so that's what we're going to focus on on the next video. I'll see you guys then.